Today is July the 26th, and this day, like every day, we are on a journey. In this podcast, we will include readings of scripture, meditation, directed prayer, silent prayer, the Lord's Prayer, and worship. Our readings come from the Revised Common Lectionary. We begin with Psalm 55, verses 16 through 23. Then on to Esther chapter 7, verses 7 through chapter 8, verse 17. And we will finish in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 55. But I will call on God, and the Lord will rescue me. Morning, noon, and night I cry out my distress, and the Lord hears my voice. He ransoms me and keeps me safe from the battle waged against me, though many still oppose me. God, who has ruled forever, will hear me and humble them, for my enemies refuse to change their ways. They do not fear God. As for my companion, he betrayed his friends. He broke his promises. His words are as smooth as butter, but in his heart is war. His words are as soothing as lotion, but underneath are daggers. Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. But you, O God, will send the wicked down to the pit of destruction. Murderers and liars will die young, but I am trusting you to save me. Esther chapter 7 Then the king jumped to his feet in a rage and went out into the palace garden. Haman, however, stayed behind to plead for his life with Queen Esther for he knew that the king intended to kill him. In despair, he fell on the couch where Queen Esther was reclining, just as the king was returning from the palace garden. The king exclaimed, Will he even assault the queen right here in the palace before my very eyes? And as soon as the king spoke, his attendants covered Haman's face, signaling his doom. Then Harbona, one of the king's eunuchs, said, Haman has set up a sharpened pole that stands seventy-five feet tall in his own courtyard. He intended to use it to impale Mordecai, the man who saved the king from assassination. Then impale Haman on it, the king ordered. So they impaled Haman on the pole he had set up for Mordecai, and the king's anger subsided. On that day, King Xerxes gave the property of Haman, the enemy of the Jews, to Queen Esther. Then Mordecai was brought before the king, for Esther had told the king how they were related. The king took off his signet ring, which he had taken back from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai, and Esther appointed Mordecai to be in charge of Haman's property. Then Esther went before the king, falling down at his feet, and begged him with tears to stop the evil plot devised by Haman the Agagite against the Jews. Again the king held out the gold scepter to Esther, so she rose and stood before him. Esther said, If it please the king, And if I have found favor with him, and if he thinks it is right, and if I am pleasing to him, let there be a decree that reverses the orders of Haman, son of Hamadatha the Agagite, who ordered that Jews throughout all the king's provinces should be destroyed. For how can I endure to see my people and my family slaughtered and destroyed? Then King Xerxes said to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew, I have given Esther the property of Haman, and he has been impaled on a pole because he tried to kill the Jews. Now go ahead and send a message to the Jews in the king's name, telling them whatever you want, and seal it with the king's signet ring. But remember that whatever has already been written in the king's name and sealed with his signet ring can never be revoked. So on June 25th, the king's secretaries were summoned, and a decree was written exactly as Mordecai dictated It was sent to the Jews and to the highest officers, the governors, and the nobles of all 127 provinces stretching from India to Ethiopia. The decree was written in the scripts and languages of all the peoples of the empire, including that of the Jews. The decree was written in the name of King Xerxes and sealed with the king's signet ring. Mordecai sent the dispatch by swift messengers who rode fast horses, especially bred for the king's service. The king's decree gave the Jews in every city 
authority to unite to defend their lives. They were allowed to kill, slaughter, and annihilate anyone of any nationality or province who might attack them or their children and wives and to take the property of their enemies. The day chosen for this event throughout all the provinces of King Xerxes was March the 7th of the next year. A copy of this decree was to be issued as law in every province and proclaimed to all people so that the Jews would be ready to take revenge on their enemies on the appointed day. So urged on by the king's command, the messengers rode out swiftly on fast horses, bred for the king's service. The same decree was also proclaimed in the fortress of Susa. Then Mordecai left the king's presence, wearing the royal robe of blue and white and a great crown of gold and an outer cloak of fine linen and purple, and the people of Susa celebrated the new decree. The Jews were filled with joy and gladness and were honored everywhere. In every province and city, wherever the king's decree arrived, the Jews rejoiced and had great celebration and declared a public festival and a holiday, and many of the people of the land became Jews themselves, for they feared what the Jews might do to them. Matthew 5, 43-48 you have heard the law that says, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And now let us take some time for silent prayer and reflection. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive. It is in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are being born to eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, 
We, your grateful children, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let me invite you to join us for tomorrow's podcast. We meet each and every day to journey together into the loving heart of God. You can also join our other podcast, The Daily Radio Bible, where we go through the entire Bible over the course of a year. Find out more at dailyradiobible.com. Today's music was provided by the artist and composer, David Nibiu. Find out more about his music at davidnibiu.com. And now let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this. That you are loved. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Take care.